Hey folks, today we're going to talk about a game that sort of stretches across two things that I really love, miniature war games and The Walking Dead. It's coming right up. Hey YouTube, this is Peg Tech, and this is my second video for Peg Tech Games. I'm glad you guys came by to say hello. Uh, I've got a really cool game here. This is The Walking Dead All Out War, and also some of the expansions. I have painted all of these, so it'll be kind of interesting to see what these look like. A lot of the videos I see, they haven't painted them yet and stuff. And a lot of the videos I see on this were like made more than a year ago. So what I'm going to do with these is very briefly go over the components. I'm going to show you the models and things that come in there. And uh, we'll discuss the game. I'll kind of give you my impressions of the game and stuff. That This isn't really a how to play or a big rules game. I'm going to gloss over some of the rules and kind of give you my impression of like how difficult they were and that sort of thing. But in the end, you should have a really good look at this game and you should be able to decide whether you'd want to pick it up or not. If you bought the Kickstarter version of this game, it comes with a really huge box. And I think it run, I think it's like $100, $125, something like that. You can buy like this, the big box. I don't know, it'll, there are some things that are Kickstarter exclusives. You'll have to look on eBay or something like that for those kind of things. But uh, there is another box that's much bigger that comes with basically what these two boxes have. All right, so let's take a look inside these boxes so we can really break it down and show you what it's all about. Okay. All right, so this is the basic set. And this starter set really contains everything you need to kind of get started playing the game. And uh, it's got this nice insert. It's got a plastic here to make sure that these minis don't fall out. Uh, the front of the box, so they, but also makes it so you can display them and, and look at them. Uh, this box is pretty smartly laid out. Uh, a lot of inserts are kind of terrible, but this one did a great job. They got a place for every miniature. A little tip that I can give you is that I've numbered each of the each of these miniatures so I can put them right back in the slot that they go in, and that makes it a lot easier to put away when the game is over. But not only is there a place for the miniatures, it's got a nice little area for the dice and for the chips and different things like that. And on top of all that, it's got a nice place for all the cards, which is something I think is lacking in a lot of games. But yeah, all, all the different types of cards, it even has little nesting holes here. So you can put all the different types of cards right back into the box and stays nice and neat. Now there's a place here for an arrow that's basically, that comes out just as soon as you uh, you set up the game. Because we're going to take a look inside the box and see what else is in here. It does come with some quick start rules. These quick start rules basically outline a small scenario. It kind of, it reads like a battle report. And uh, you can play this, through the this scenario and it's kind of a quick, easy way to teach yourself the rules. And it's got more extensive rules. The, the rule books in this, especially with the quick start guide here that lays out all the different types of items that are inside and uh, kind of gives you a, a mechanism by which to learn the game. I thought that was really smart. Uh, the rule book itself is, is nice to read. It's really well laid out. Uh, good color pictures and that sort of thing. Very cool, and on the back, what I think every rule book should have is basically a quick reference, almost an index. Here's everything that happens in a turn, every, every possible uh, action that you can take, different consequences for things, that, uh, how to move the walkers. The walkers move in a very automatic way. This gives you all that laid down. So after you read the rules, Maybe you, some people are great about remembering every single rule and all the little nuance rules and stuff like that, but if you're not, there's a great quick reference sheet. And this, after you've read the rule book, this is really all you need uh, sitting beside you just as a quick reference for things that you might want to try. Also included inside is this ruler. And what's great about this ruler too is it's got some of the rules built into it. Like it's got the movement outline for how far it is to sneak and how far a character can run. And on the back, it's got uh, the shamble speed. That's a zombie. That's how fast a zombie can move. 
and the Mayhem range, which is basically the entire length of the ruler, which is 10 inches long. Many of these kits come with Mantic points, which you can use to uh, save up. It would take you quite a while, a lot of purchasing uh, to save up for this, but if you're going to avidly buy all the blister packs, you can save these up and uh, get other cool stuff from Mantic. The game comes with four of them and uh, other blister packs and things. I'll just keep them in here to keep it all clean. The other blister packs will contain one of these each. Another component of this game is this kill zone template. Now, this is basically a two inch template and this measures sort of the awareness of a zombie. So in a certain phase uh, of the game, it also measures like a blast if you had a grenade or something like that go off. So during the game, right around the time that the zombies move, you place this over the top and if you have a character that's within the awareness area of a zombie, he'll uh, walk over and try to bite him. So that's basically what this is for. Also, it's excellent frisbee. This is the threat tracker. I've seen a, a, little, a few criticisms online saying that this is like a little bit too, uh, too easy to move. It looks like something you'd flip <laughs> in like one of those old 80s style games. What it does is uh, different events will move the threat level up. Like uh, being in close combat, taking a shot with a gun and that sort of thing. And what will happen is this will move up during the game. If it ever gets all the way to the end, the game's over. You know, is the threat's too high. But uh, there are cards that you draw, there are event cards, and you draw them during a certain phase of the game. And the severity of the events that you draw will be determined by how high the threat level is. And we've got a little badge here. This is the first player marker. And uh, you'll be passing this back and forth to see who's got uh, initiative. It also came with a bunch of little cardboard terrain pieces. You got some cars and stuff. And what's interesting is they have a point system on their terrain. Like this car is two points. Different levels of game will have different amounts of points of terrain placed onto the board. So you wouldn't usually play in like an empty field or something like that. You're always going to have uh, some terrain out and it comes with a pretty decent amount. Just another car. Big truck. And you'll see the bigger terrain pieces too. Like this is supposed to be the RV or ARV, you know, with three points versus a two point for a car. It also has a number of these little barricades. As you can see here, these are all barricades. And of course these are like one point a piece. Uh, I have a plastic terrain set, which I'm going to show you in a minute, which kind of replaces all of these little wooden cardboard things. Or most of them anyway. And the last thing in the box here is a paper play mat. This is 20 by 20. It's a really small for a game mat. It's made of paper. Not the greatest. But it is definitely better than nothing. And uh, it means you can buy a base set and without building a lot of terrain just to kind of figure out how you like the game or just kind of teach yourself to play it. You've got a nice attractive way to get started and it's not bad. You know, it's a little shiny, you got the creases, and it's paper, so you can damage it if you're not careful with it. Yeah, that comes right there in the box. Okay, so now we're into the cards and the chits, and let's just start with these uh, cardboard markers here. One of the main scenarios you'll find in, in these games is uh, you're searching for supplies, right? And so one side of the supply marker looks like that, and then after it's searched, of course, you flip it over and it's searched. It comes with a number of these. Again, this is another component that uh, is replaced with a plastic component in the scenery box. We'll break into that in a second. It comes with a number of these little things. Uh, these both indicate that, a, that a, uh, a character has moved if you're having trouble keeping track of that. And uh, also can track health. The health ones, you'll see, they'll have this kind of green heartbeat on one side and on the other side, you got something that looks like a bite. So you can tell uh, if someone's bitten, you can flip that over and that might change, well, definitely will change what happens next turn. As we get into the cards here, we've got one walker card. It's kind of a quick reference for what the walker can do. We've got character cards. 
which indicate a number of things. If we look here at Rick Grimes, they do have different character classes. He's a tactician. Uh, right here describes the different types of dice he can use for different types of attacks. The high nerve here relates directly back to this wheel. And uh, once things get into a high threat or a medium threat, some people can lose their nerve and they'll actually uh, react in a funny way. Here are the hit points you can track. Some special rules. Of course there's a points cost and that's how you determine like the level of a game and just how how much of a game you're going to play. Uh, if you look along the side there are items. There are little slots that kind of indicate that he can hold an item. There's one for each hand and of course his head and his body. So he could have wear armor there and a helmet and then maybe a hatchet in one hand and a gun in the other. But these little cards here indicate that he can hold three more items uh, inside of here that, that aren't equipped. And all these stats of course change from character to character. Of course, you know, like little Carl here can only hold one item in his backpack. The uh, quite fearful Liam here <laughs> can only hold two. And uh, the rules and all the different interesting things about these guys. Some of these guys really don't have many rules. They're kind of minion type people and others are, uh, you know, a little far more important. Okay, the next thing I want to show you are the supply cards. Now, when you first start the game and you're building out your team, you're going to pull from these cards. They're marked as equipment. And of course, they do have a points cost. And uh, you'll see the item and whatever rule is attached to that item. And usually, when you lay it out on the game, or just you just set it right there to indicate that it's in his hand. If you put it down here, it's in his backpack. And as an action, he can switch these things and uh, employ them, but he can carry some stuff around, but usually if you want him to use it, it needs to be equipped. The other kind of card you can get are these supply cards, and these are basically the results of uh, those supply tokens I was showing you. You flip them over, and then you, you randomly get different things. And sometimes you get good stuff, sometimes a zombie jumps out and attacks you. So it's, I think there's only two of these lurkers in the deck, but uh, there's no fun to run into one of those. And one tactic I've found with this game is uh, you can take some of these guys, because the points cost is pretty heavy. I mean, if you do Rick and his hatchet here, I mean, that's, that's uh, 62 points for a hatchet and Rick just by themselves. But you can send some of the minion guys in there sort of uh, only mildly equipped, and hopefully, oh, there's another bad thing that can happen, booby trap. And uh, hopefully they'll run into a weapon or something like that. They might pick up an old gun, just some bandages, ammo relays, just a box of nothing, hockey or a tire iron, metal pipe, hockey stick, plank of wood. <laughs> yeah, not a lot of options, but they may get lucky. I guess the the old gun is probably the best thing they could pick out of there. Okay, so the last card I'm going to show you is the event cards. Once a round, you're going to draw one of these and read the effects. And like I was, was saying before, your threat level will indicate the severity of the event that you, that you draw. Let's take a look at this one. All quiet and low threat. The player with the initiative chooses a walker and moves it in the direction of their choice, all eligible walkers within eight inches of the chosen walker then also move, converging on the chosen walker. <laughs> Medium to high threat, as above, in addition, all prone walkers immediately stand up. So you can see, as the threat moves up, the problems escalate. And this is a really, really mild card compared to some of the stuff in this evil, evil deck. Okay, so the very last thing I want to show you are the dice that come with this game. On the low end of the dice are these red ones. And uh, they have a couple of blanks, a couple of regular pips, and they have only one of these doubles. You'll notice there's an exclamation point there too. If you're a walker and you roll this, that means that there's a bite. And if you're a human and you roll this, it means that it was a headshot, which counts as extra damage on people and for walkers, it means they don't get back up. Otherwise, a walker's just knocked down. The white ones are a little bit better. They have, uh, I think, one blank, 
and a double and a double with an exclamation point. So or maybe two blanks. No, just one. But a little bit better, but still not great. The blue dice are the best. They have no blanks. They have a triple with an exclamation point, a double, and a couple more doubles. Definitely the best of the dice. There are two other special dice in this game. This is the simplest. Uh, this is used for a number of different things, like determining if a walker stands up, uh, determining if a bite takes another wound. This dice is basically a 50-50 shot. It's got shields on three sides. It's used for a different, number of different mechanisms within the game. This last dice is pretty neat, and it ties into a couple of different things. You'll see on a character sheet where it says nerve, Oh, Liam here is a real, uh, real champion, and uh, his nerve is low. So when we look at the threat dial, while we're in all quiet and low, he's okay. But as it creeps into these higher threat levels, because his nerve is low, it's lower than the threat level, he's going to have to roll this dice. And this dice basically determines what they're going to do. They might scream. Does that look familiar? Can't remember what the question mark does. <laughs> but they might run. They might scream, run, they might fight a little bit harder. Uh, they might just try to be as quiet as possible. It's a pretty interesting little random effect to see what happens to your cowardly characters. Alright, now what we'll do is we'll take a look at some of the miniatures that come in the game. I'm going to start with the people. So it comes with these people that I guess can just be other survivors other than kind of your hero survivors. And, and small disclaimer before we get started, I'm not the greatest uh, miniature painter ever. I try to get it to where it's like a little bit better than passable. <laughs> That's really my goal. I actually can't see very well. If you knew how blind I was, you'd be really impressed. Uh, I don't tend to paint faces. Uh, any more than you see there, any more than just some shading or something like that. But uh, this does give you a good idea how these are. They were extremely easy to paint. Uh, really not very difficult at all to paint. And that's mostly because they're, they're really simply designed. You know, they don't have any really complicated things going on. Uh, but what's great about this little box is that every one of these miniatures is unique. You would expect perhaps like the humans, of course, to be uh, unique, all the people, but for uh, all the zombies are unique as well. And I thought they were all really, really well done. I think this is my favorite of the guys. These guys always end up being the bad guys in my little test games and stuff. I'm not sure what he's pointing at there. But again, really, really simple, simple miniatures. Uh, really easy to paint, really easy to paint the clothes and stuff like that. Of course, most of my guys are wearing blue jeans. Makes it easier. And here you've got like Rick Grimes and Carl. And uh, these are made to look like the comic book. This is actually made off the television show. And if you didn't know already, The Walking Dead originally was a comic book. And the IP that Mantic got to do this game was from the comic book rights, not the television rights. So this looks a little bit different than maybe the Rick you know from television. But that's Rick Grimes. And there's little Carl. With his lucky hat. These were a lot of fun to paint. I really liked the variety of all the different kinds of zombies and stuff. I thought it was really interesting. There's a lot of them too. It came with a really a pretty good variety of zombies. In all different states of decrepancy. And it was really a lot of fun to paint these. So in playing this game, so while I played this game, I found that the playtime ran around uh, between 45 minutes, if you're really unlucky with some of your die rolls, to uh, to maybe an hour, hour and a half, if things go a little bit long. 
That was me playing really basic 100 point games, not really huge games or anything like that. I tried to stick it to around 100 points. So a 100 point game will probably take you about an hour or so to play. It really didn't take long to paint, especially this this basic box set. I basically, I went through it in about, I'd say about a week or so. A week or so of painting them every night. Yeah, really not bad at all. Really wide variety of different kind of characters and stuff. Pretty neat. Now after you've played a few games, you might be interested in picking up some expansions. And I've got uh, three miniature expansions to show you. Uh, this first one is Ezekiel, the king. Ezekiel, Ezekiel, of course, comes with his own character cards and some equipment cards. Unique for him. This guy was a lot of fun to paint. He's one of my favorite characters, at least from the TV show. I've read some of the comics, but I don't think I got this far in the comics to actually meet him that way. But his model is really, really neat. And of course you've got his pet, Shiva. His pet tiger. Again, this was, this was different. I've never painted a tiger before. I thought it came out pretty good. Had a lot of pictures to use as reference and that sort of thing. They look pretty neat. Pretty intimidating on the battlefield. Incidentally, if you're doing a 100 point game, you basically have to take him with almost no equipment if you want him and the tiger. So he's this, him with all of his stuff is about a 125 point game. Of course this box set comes with a walker as well. They all seem to come with one walker and some of them seem to go with the box and some of them don't. This one I'd say is, is more on the don't side. Like I don't, I don't recognize him as anything in particular uh, to that character. Alright so the next box set we have is for Morgan. And of course as you might expect Morgan comes with his own character cards. Uh, for both him and his son, which come in this booster, and some equipment cards unique to the models that are inside here. So this is the Morgan box set. And to me, this seems a lot more thematic than, <laughs> than maybe the last one, especially since it, you'll notice the walker that comes with this box set. It looks an awful lot like it could be, maybe, Morgan's wife, which you'll remember was sort of a thing he had to deal with in the TV show, and imagine in the comic book as well. Morgan himself looks really, looks really formidable with his little axe there and his rifle. And of course his child here with his shovel, which I believe uh, from the TV show at least, he bashed Rick in the head with. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, another really neat box set. I really love to paint miniatures and stuff, and uh, some of these box sets I think I would get even if I didn't have the whole game, just because uh, I enjoyed painting these guys. I thought it was a lot of fun. So the last character booster I have to show you is Michonne, and this is actually Michonne and her pets. This is a pretty neat box set. It did actually come with a chain uh, in the comic book and the show. She's dragging these two zombies around by a chain to sort of mask her scent. And there are rules built right into the game just for this. Now it's got the chain, but certain things happen that can cause you to remove one of these zombies. So if Michonne takes a hit during the game, she can actually trade off one of these zombies and uh, discard the effects of that hit. So th for that reason, I did not attach the little chain to it. I just haven't figured out a way to make that work. Maybe with magnets or something else, but still a really, really neat little kit. Michonne is definitely one of my favorite characters. Another expansion you can get is the scenery expansion. I, I've mentioned this a couple of times in the video already, but this is basically all those cardboard, sort of mimics all those cardboard uh, chits and stuff we have. The scenery kit's really cool. It comes with four of these cars. You've got two cars and two trucks. You've got ten of these objective markers, which are all kinds of different things, from little backpacks to suitcases. 
and crates and that sort of thing. It also comes with six of these barricades and the barricades, I think there's like three different kinds of barricades here and they look really good. A lot better than just putting a piece of cardboard down. I gotta say I really like the 3D terrain pieces here. What's cool about this game is you can keep it really simple or you can really go hog wild. I've seen some really amazing game boards that people have made for this. Some of them are pretty elaborate. If you play other games like maybe, I don't know, like Warhammer or something like that, or like I was saying with that Firefly game, um, if you play other games that are sort of in the same scale, you can probably mix and match some other stuff in and, and uh, really add a lot of variety to your Walking Dead game. Okay, so the last expansion I'm going to talk about is this game mat. Now this is not the mat that came with the game, rather this is an extra thing that you can buy and it's made of neoprene. So basically it's a great big mouse pad. It feels just like you'd imagine a mouse pad to feel. I think this is called the farmhouse. Uh, there's a couple of different versions of this. This is the farmhouse. It's a 20 by 20. Perfect for those little tiny 100 point, 100 to 20 point games. And uh, it's really amazing to play a war game on such a small surface like this. And this is great. There's no creases except for where I've left it folded for a little while. <laughs> this isn't going to be damaged as readily as paper, you know, if it gets a little wet or damp or something like that. Uh, the miniatures look absolutely fantastic on it. So although it was a little bit pricey, I do think it's a really neat thing to have, especially since it's so small. So easy to take this and uh, fold it up and store it away. Or to break it out for a quick game. And here's sort of a loose interpretation of what uh, a game set up and ready to go might look like. Of course you've got your ruler, you've got character cards and their equipment, you've got your event deck, a little reference card for the zombie, the threat tracker, the kill zone marker, dice, the initiative marker, and of course the other opposing sides character sheets. And down here we place some supply markers and that sort of thing. Uh, it tells you to always start with at least one right dead center of the board. It's not quite dead center. And then I'll ask you to put a zombie right next to each supply marker. And then of course the characters have their deployment zones at the edge of the board. I find this to be a pretty terrific little skirmish game. Uh, it's a it's basically a war game but lighter weight. There's a lot less rules and things to know uh, than say Warhammer or any of the games workshop type games but it has a lot of the same kind of hobby component. Uh, one thing you don't have to do is assemble these models. They come fully assembled so all you have to do is paint them which can save you a lot of time. And they're not quite as detailed as a games workshop type model but they are still really really nicely made. I find the average games of this take, it takes about an hour. It's almost exactly an hour. I've run over maybe an hour and 15 minutes or so if I had to reference a couple of rules, especially when I was first uh, getting used to playing the game. The mechanics of the threat dial and these kill zones seem to work very well. You can tell by the small size of this board, it's very claustrophobic. If you fire a gun, it's gonna alert everybody within 10 inches and you can see that uh, it'd be very, a very bad idea to just go off and shoot your gun right away, especially when there are a lot of zombies. You really want to try to handle them in hand-to-hand -hand combat. There are a number of interesting rules in this game, like there's a, there's a sneak movement that you can make and maybe not alert a zombie, and then there's a run movement that's much further but will bring whatever the closest zombie is straight into you. But this game is a lot of fun to play, it's a lot of fun to look at, it plays in a really small area, so if you don't have room for one of those giant Warhammer 40k style uh, 4x8 boards, no problem. You can play this on a, a really small, really, even a 4x4 four four foot table would be huge for this game. You can play bigger games with this too. This also scales up. And while I've never played with more than 150 points, I'm absolutely certain that this would be a great game at like 500 points or something like that. But of course you'll need a much bigger battlefield. If you already play war games, you can absolutely supplement some of your other terrain pieces, especially if you've got grasslands with hills and trees and stuff like that, and definitely make a really, really cool battlefield. 
To me, this is a game that could be fun if you're experienced with war games, or uh, maybe you're just getting into war games. Maybe you're kind of fascinated by the whole thing, but you don't want to dive right into a giant army. Uh, the basic box set, even with the cardboard versions of all these pieces and stuff, uh, is a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to play. And this, and these extra plastic pieces, I think that was just, uh, I think it was around thirty dollars for that extra box set. Really not, not terrible. Not super cheap, but not terrible either. To me, the rules were pretty easy to learn. I did have to go through the book a couple of times and watch a video to to make sure that I got all the little nuances. But uh, the videos were actually pretty fun to watch, and the book was easy to read. And of course, it's got that back reference sheet, which is excellent for helping you figure out some uh, rules that maybe slipped your mind. Overall, as a game set, I highly recommend it. I think that this would be something that would be fun for a lot of people, and that's why I wanted to bring it here and show you guys today. And folks, that's all I got for you today, but don't worry. I've got a whole shelf full of games. I'm not sure which one I'm going to break out next, or if I'm going to talk about games or a theme, or maybe get into painting or anything like that. If you have a request, of course, you can leave it down below, and I'll do my best to get to it if I can. But until next time, follow your bliss, play more games, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Hey folks, today we're going to talk about a game that kind of stretches the cause. Uh, hey YouTube, this is Tech Tech, and I'm going to spit everywhere. That's all I got for you today, folks. Thank you so much for chiming in.